welcome back to the channel guys today i'll be doing an undervolt versus max overclock performance comparison some people like to overclock their cards to the maximum just to see how much performance they can get out of it that's the kind of route i like to usually take but not everyone likes to do that you can also undervolt your card save power let it run cooler and with the right settings maintain that performance that you get out the box with using less resources basically so it's basically two sides of the spectrum uh, i'm interested to see what my card can do on both so i'm going to show you my maximum overclock settings i'm using msi afterburner for overclocking version 4.66 beta 5 and i'm also using driver 576.02 which is the latest as of recording so i put my core clock which is generally my maximum to 300 and 15 megahertz for the memory i put it all the way up to 3000 megahertz that will generally get you in a non gpu power limited game you'd get around 3100 megahertz plus with this with a more power limited ray tracing game you'll get about 3060 megahertz so that's my maximum overclock completely rock stable now for my undervolt my card will usually use 10.0 1.065 volts out of the box as a maximum so we want to go quite below that so just press ctrl f to bring up the voltage frequency curve editor i want to go for 0 0.9 volts so rather than do every single point individually you guys are screaming at me to highlight all your voltage points and just do them all at once so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to be going for 0 0.900 volts and we want to try and get about 2900 megahertz overclock out of this so i'm going to go for about 2975 when your gpu gets around 50 to 55 degrees it should shave off another 30 megahertz so hopefully it will be around 2925 or something like that um in in general actual games so you just hit accept and what you'll see is you'll get a curve that starts to still go up and you don't want that because that can cause instability at your higher voltage points so what you want to do is I like every single voltage point after 0 0.9 volts. Drag that down to about here, click accept. Get a nice flat curve now. Shouldn't have any boost clocks that will cause instability now. So that's pretty much it for the undervolt settings. What I'm also gonna do, run both fan speeds at a locked maximum 70% because undervolt will use less power, produce less heat. We still wanna see what the GPU core clock and what the GP temperature would be with the fans exactly at the same fan speed. So that's why I'm doing that. So those are the settings. Um, in terms of the software I'm going to quickly use to demonstrate this test or comparison is Unigine Heaven 4.0. And I'll be using DirectX 11, ultra quality, extreme tessellation, um, and eight times anti-aliasing at a resolution of 3840 by 2160. Very, very um, consistent test and um, looking forward to see what the differences are.
So the tests have been running for quite a while now and we can get a clearer picture of what the settings have changed and you can see power consumption has changed massively. You're saving around 130 watts compared to the maximum overclock. So if you're into um, saving power, um, undervolting is definitely the way to go. Of course, that means you're running at a lower temperature as well. So around six to seven degree difference between undervolt and max overclock, but the performance as well is lower as a result. So from what I can see, it looks like a seven or eight FPS difference, but we'll get a score at the very end of this test, which will um, solidify that. But um, you can definitely get good performance with the RTX 5090 if you're willing to undervolt it. And um, this is definitely not really a massive compromise in performance, honestly. Um, this probably is the way to go and um, in general but um i kind of just like to push things to the maximum but if you don't care too much about that and you want to run things cool and quiet then um, undervolting definitely makes more sense and you can see that even the memory is operating at around six degrees cooler due to just using less power so all in all um f temps are an issue this is definitely something you can do to Put a little less stress on the card and again this will actually shine in a power limited scenario you can see i'm using around 589 watts there whereas the undervolts are using around 450 so again almost 130 140 watts saving there in terms of power consumption and that's that's actually quite meaningful using around 0 0.895 volts and the stock card using or the overclock card should i say using overall 1.055 so it does make quite a big difference so uh, the results are about to come in now so we can just have a quick look at how much performance was actually lost and it seems that it's not much of a compromise 194.2 frames per second with the undervolt on 100 and 202.3 with the overclock so eight frames it's not a massive massive deal you're saving over 130 140 watts seven to eight degrees cooler you'd be less power limited in um, really really demanding games so all in all um i would say that's quite a success anyway guys that's pretty much it for me hopefully you've enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching